artificial intelligence in the last mile. Topic of my conversation today with Bart DeMunk. He is Chief Industry Officer with Project 44. Hi, Bart. Hey, Bob. Welcome back. Thank you for having me again. Always good to talk to you, and this is an interesting topic. As we know, artificial intelligence has found its way into just about every aspect of our lives these days. What role is it playing in the last mile delivery? Great question. And like you said, right, AI, it definitely isn't new. It actually got coined about 70 years ago, mm -hmm. right? Of course, but back then... What we called it back then is maybe not what it is now, but correct. still. Yeah. Back then it was more of a concept, and today we've really yeah. seen it become a reality, and everyone probably has a smartphone nowadays, and you would be surprised how many of those apps you use on the smartphones have AI built into it. Well, the same with last mile, and we've obviously the last few years seen incredible challenges in the last mile. We all know about the huge increases in volumes, the huge increases in cost. We've seen things like in the warehouse with labor shortages. We've seen things on the road with lack of capacity or maybe less lack of guarantees of service times. Mm -hmm. So that's where AI comes in, where we can really use AI to one, augment certain capabilities, so give the people who, especially in transportation, are still the key, I would say, protagonist of the process to give them better tools like insights and visibility to do their job better, to mm -hmm. do it more efficient, to be able to handle more volume. And also at the end of the day, to have a better job and work life balance. Sure. But on the other side, we also use a true artificial intelligence in the sense that we can now replace humans with robots. And that's definitely something we've seen in the warehouse. And especially when it comes to warehouses where they have to do very fast fulfillment for next day delivery, or for example, for groceries, a lot of that has been automated in these last few years. But even in the warehouse, we're seeing people side by side with the robots. So their people aren't being washed out of the system completely, even on the execution side. But, that is uh, absolutely correct. I yeah. mean, people sometimes think because we have this artificial intelligence, what's going to happen to our jobs? Mm -hmm. The same happened, to be honest, 25, 30 years ago when we all got personal computers and people go, oh my, we're going to get replaced by a personal computer. Guess what? We all still have jobs and we all use a personal computer to make our jobs better and easier. And so talent is becoming even more important, I would say, because we're taking the mundane and routine tasks away from the human but the human is going to take much more of the creative and value creation and important tasks. Mm -hmm. And we can automate some of those mundane tasks. But what we're also doing is we've seen that switch from more of your regular talent, more to digital talent. So when companies are thinking about these words like digital transformation, mm -hmm. a big part of that is having to understand how does that affect the talent that I need to recruit? And what we're actually doing is using things like AI to attract those people coming from university because they know they're going to have a better job and a more interesting job because they can use tools like AI. So yeah. it really helps hmm. companies with both talent attraction as well as retention of that talent. Interesting, AI becomes kind of a, a helper in the human element as, as well. Um, okay, so AI has probably come in to be of some value in the last couple of years with capacity crunches, with congestion, things like that. How do you expect, and we're just right now going into the peak season of mm -hmm. 2022, how might AI help companies to further weather the surge of demand and the continuing constriction in capacity? Where does it, what role does it play there on a kind of a temporary basis? Yeah, I think the peak season this year is quite different from what we've seen in past years, because uh, typically you would be able to forecast, well, we have peak season coming for a lot of retailers that would be Christmas, right. and they would see the common consumer behavior. Well, the consumer behavior the last year is, is nothing but common, and it's been very unpredictable. And so what they're using the AI for is really to say, give me all the insights, not just history, because history isn't going to repeat itself anymore, mm -hmm. but real-time information, but give me a lot more data used with things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning to be able to get a much higher efficiency of forecasting where demand is going to be, where you need that inventory, which by the way, this year has been a terrible headaches for large companies. Look at Amazon, Walmart, only single digit revenue growth, but yet their right. uh, inventory has gone up 30, 40%. Mm -hmm. You really need to utilize that data in a different way and understanding that the past and the way we've seen peak season being forecasted right. isn't the same as we have today. So we need more of that technology to more accurately forecast what's going to happen. And I would say the other part is what we haven't seen the past few years, which obviously is kind of one of the headlines of this year, is inflation. 
And what does inflation do? It reduces demand. Mm -hmm. And so although people say, well, if demand goes down, there's less need for warehouse labor, there's less need for transportation. But it isn't quite that simple, Bob, because what's happening is that the consumer understand that one, yes, there's inflation, less consumer demand, but at the same time, they know that their retailers have this huge volumes of inventory. So what are they doing? They're waiting for a big sale. Right. So instead of having one peak, we're starting to see more peaks coming in. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, Amazon, they're doing another prime in October. So we're creating actually more peaks, which is really creating more havoc on the whole supply chain. Well, you'd expect maybe AI will back up and actually become uh, instrumental in inventory management and pred predictions even before the logistics part of it comes into the picture, but of course that's what we're talking about here. Of course, any AI system, any so-called smart system is only as good as the data that it flows into it. So what are the innovations and challenges that are out there in collecting this data that makes it possible for the AI engine to do its job in the first place? You're absolutely correct. So certain, for certain parts of machine learning and deep learning, you actually need the data, like supervised learning, unsupervised learning. Mm -hmm. That's where you feed the data. So the data is incredibly important. And obviously there you have platforms that are collecting that data from all the different parties, from the suppliers, from the customers, from the shippers, but also from all the logistics service providers, which can be 3PLs that do warehousing, transportation, the asset-based carriers, et cetera. But then what we're also seeing more and more that now we kind of have that kind of more reinforcement learning, which is machines that you can give them no data at all, and they figure it out themselves. So I always wow. use the probably very well-known example of AlphaGo. So it, Go is this aging game. They made a whole documentary about it mm -hmm. uh, in Netflix. And what it did is a computer didn't get any data and, and it didn't get any kind of examples from the past, which really also helps the computer to say, I'm not going to get stuck with the way that you think. And in transportation, when you ask someone, why have you been doing it this way? They said, because we've been doing it like that for 20, 30 years. So sometimes mm -hmm. having no notion of the past or how you're supposed to do things liberates you of thinking differently. And what we saw with this reinforcement learning, it took the computer 40 days to beat the biggest masters out there in this Go game. Mm -hmm. And the one finding they had was in, in one of the games, I think it was the second game, all of a sudden the computer made this move that everyone kind of just sighed and said, a human would never make what that move. What was that? Yeah. Hence, yeah. he made a mistake. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The computer ended up winning. And what it showed really was that the computer did something innovative because a human would have never thought of that move. And that's where we need to start understanding as well that in certain circumstances, yes, we want to feed that machine learning and deep learning data. In certain um, uh, circumstances, mm -hmm. we want the machine to come up with the answer because it isn't kind of constrained by previous behavior, which sometimes, you know, we kind of get in our own way of solving it. Yeah. because we're too much and too close to it to really come up with an out-of-the-box way of approaching it. How interesting. It'll be interesting to see how that translates into last mile experiences. Like, who knew that it would pick this carrier and this route? It didn't seem like it makes sense. It would be a, a, kind of a correlative to the, to the GO situation. We'll look forward to seeing that in, in future. Thanks so much, Bart, yeah. for your insights into AI in the last mile. Tell us a little bit about what Project 44 is up to today. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a big day, especially today. Uh, we just announced Movement, which is the new platform. So uh, many people probably have seen that Project 44 has not only grown substantially in the last few years, but we've actually done five acquisitions in the last year and a half. And what we've done is we've taken all those different disparate data sets and brought them all together into a single data platform and then laid on top of that a single human and user interface. So now we can really offer customers and companies out there full global end-to-end -end visibility on a new platform. We compared a little bit to what Steve Jobs did to the iPhone where you had multiple applications and multiple uses mm -hmm. and then not just put that all into one device or one platform, but then also added two things to it, which was a completely new interface, mm -hmm. how you interact with it, no longer the keyboard, but it was all screen. And then secondly, where you add the content. And that's how companies need to see this, where you bring all the modes, all regions onto a single platform, but you're giving it a completely new way for people to react with it. And again, mm -hmm. when we talk about how do you retain talent and attract talent is by giving people a better experience. 
It's the user giving them a better experience, but also your last mile customer who might be on the other side looking at that system, whether that's on a phone or on a laptop to say, where's my order? To give them that same beautiful customer experience. And that's what enlightens people. And mm -hmm. hopefully that will make supply chains work better. Bart, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Bob. I've been speaking with Bart DeMunk of Project 44. Thank you very much for watching.